Troy at going to San Marcos, Texas State. Both teams are playing really well this year. Texas State exceeding expectations like none other. TJ Finley, who in the SEC was a rather pedestrian quarterback, has looked incredible this year. He's looked incredible. Gunnar Watson, he's been fine. He's been good enough at quarterback this year to play well. What's really done well for Troy is right. Their defense has been lights out. Their passing offense has been efficient, not necessarily electric, but it's been efficient. And they've been running the ball an absolute ton. Right. Now everyone wants to talk about Kamani Vidal, right? Because he, you know, leads the nation with 951 rushing yards up to this point, which is like 60 yards more than second place, right? Um, he's been dominant. But let's talk about what's on the other side. Texas State, body, they're running back. Now, granted, he didn't even lead the team in carries last week. I know his wrist's been bothering him, but, I mean, he his wrist was bothering him at the end of the, the, the Louisiana game, and he ran for, like, 188 yards. Mahdi is second in the nation in all-purpose yards. Only behind Ash and Gianti for Boise State. So I, these are two teams that have quarterbacks that are playing really efficient football. These are two teams that have really good running games. Uh, both teams have really good receivers. In fact, I, I would argue that Oberon Hawkins for Texas State is arguably top 25, top 30 wide receiver group, wide receiver duo in the country. But... Uh, I mean, if you look at Troy, 31st in rushing offense, 49th in passing offense, uh, 17th in run defense, 17th or 18th in pass defense in the country. This is a team that probably power rates in the top 30, which is wild as a Sunbelt team. Uh, This Texas State team, right, they're 16th in the country in rushing offensively, 37th in the country uh, passing offensively. Defensively, though, not as good. Not as good. They're giving up about 4.9 yards per carry the last three games, which is bottom 25. And they're giving up 7.3 yards per attempt in the last three games as well, which is about the middle of the road. So I I don't know, four and a half. It isn't home, though. It is in San Marcos. And that place will be bumping for sure. It's always tough to play on the road in conference. It really is. And when TJ Finley's playing at the level that he is and Madi's cruising with the ball, if he's healthy with his wrist, it's hard to get wins on the road, right? Where are you going with this? It's it's really hard because, you know, when you're picking games, you see two somewhat evenly matched teams, right? Two teams playing well. You have TJ Finley, who is a better quarterback than Gunnar Watson, or at least has been playing fantastic, and they're at home. It's hard to not pick Texas State, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to fade him. I'm going to go John Summerall and Troy. I, I think – they're just really good. I think they're playing fantastic football. Um, Texas State struggled against UL Monroe. Now, yes, they had a bye week, but they've kind of, since that that high of scoring 50 points against Southern Miss, they've kind of been regressing a little bit towards the mean. Um, and I, I do think that bye week is going to help them for sure, but not in this game. I'm going to go Troy. I do think people overlook that win against Georgia State. Georgia State's a good football team. Right, Arkansas State with Jalen Rayner, good team. Army in the middle of the season to shut him out to blank him is very very impressive. Um, I'm, I, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Troy here. I think Gunnar Watson gets it done. I think they can run the f- football on the road. Their defense has been playing good. If not, actually actually fantastic in recent weeks. I think they shut down TJ Finley. I think they forced him to throw a couple interceptions. And and they get it done on the road in conference play, and then they really, I mean, they're leading the sun, they're leading, or in the sun out there, they're winning their division, right? They, they've got a chance to meet up again with with James Madison in the conference championship game, which would be a fantastic game. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna go Troy here. What say you? Yeah, I'm with you there. Like Troy, if you look, I think they're 49th in yards per carry on the year, but that is not really tells a full story. Last three games, they're 10th in the country in yards per carry. So that's that, That's pretty good. So once they've hit the Sun Belt, they've, they've gotten rolling. And uh, 
eight and a half yards per attempt passing wise. That's good for 25th in the country. So again, really, really efficient in the passing game. So I'll take Troy and I'll take the four and a half, but let me, let me explain to you how Texas state wins this football game. Troy, despite having a very good running attack and a very efficient pass game, they have not been good on third down this season. 37%. That is, that is bottom quadrant, bottom third in the country. Let me tell you this about Texas State. They average nine tackles for loss per game. Nine. You know what that's good for in the country? That's good for third in the entire country. They have 63 tackles for loss on the year. You know that they're behind they're behind Oklahoma and Texas AM. That's it. That's it. 22 players on Texas State have recorded the tackle for loss. So it's not just a few players eating up. Well, granted, Brian Holloway leads the way, having nine himself, which is absurd at this point in the season. Uh, you plays linebacker for them. That that that's a recipe. If they get like early downs, if Kamani Vidal, if they get some TFLs, right, and force Gunnar Watson back in like extreme passing situations where he's not comfortable, I could see Texas State forcing this Troy offense into bad field position, and. If they win the field position battle this game at home, I think they can win this game. So key for Texas State, continue to get negative plays. Continue to get negative plays. Now, you could say the same thing about Troy. I mean, can Texas State stop Javon Solomon? I mean, he, six sacks on the year. I mean, he's he's been lights out rushing the passer. Lights out. Very, very good football player. And overall, this Troy defense has been really good. While they haven't produced as many tackles for loss as Texas State is, they're still top half team in that department, creating negative plays, havoc percentage. If you, if you look at that, uh, you can find that stat very important. I do think this is just Troy teams more talented. It's better coached. Give me Troy in the four and a half, but I could see Texas State winning this game for sure. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. 